We've talked a lot about coaching sets and locomotives, but we haven't really talked about wagons and what we have to do to get them working well. As you know, we spent a lot of time weathering all our stock and we've I've got these lovely things with this freight train that's coming through here now and you can see it all looks beautiful, all the weather wagons, but that's only half the story because without these wagons actually running reliably, we're stuffed. So, we then decided we put trusted Tony in the bit of the hot spot and we gave him the responsibility of actually getting the wagons ready for testing on the layout over and above the weathering. So, in trusted McKinley fashion, we threw him to the lions. I mean, sorry, put him in front of the camera. And you're now going to see Tony just recounting all the steps he goes through to get these wagons running reliably like that. Thank you. As well as having the fun of making McKinley stock dirty and aged, I have a serious job to do. I do wagging acceptance. When a wagon comes out of its box, it's checked and is assigned a number by my friend Ian. This is the ID number. This number stays with the wagging throughout its life. This is my wagging acceptance sheet. This is a simplified checklist designed especially for me to check the wagon through a series of events. My next job is to weigh each wagon to make sure it is of the appropriate weight. The formula is buffer to buffer 5 grams per centimeter. Therefore a 9 centimeter wagon will weigh 45 grams. So how does this work in practice? This vented van weighs 45 grams whereas this covered grain hopper weighs 65 grams often wagons do not fit into the standard profile of weighing for example these wagons are going to have removable loads so we have to reach a compromise sometimes these wagons go around the track empty Sometimes these wagons will go around the track fully loaded. So we have to find a weight that is a compromise for both situations. We do this by a bit of trickery, by adding a weight and a false floor. This takes us to just under the ideal weight of 45 grams. But when we add the external load, it takes us over the ideal weight. But only marginally over 45 grams. Next, I fit a 10K resistor to aid with block detection. This allows train controller to detect the presence of this wagon. It's fitted on just one axle. Should we get a breakaway, train controller will stop a collision. The next thing I check is the NEM pocket height with this little gauge. As you can see, this is at the ideal NEM pocket height. If the NEM pocket is too high, I highlight it with a dot of red paint. This will alert us to which KD coupling it requires. I then check the back to back with my beautiful little gauge. I then weather the model, but that will be covered in another video. Next. I glue a piece of foam underneath. This is for the RFID tag, which is yet another video. Here you can see the unique wagon ID number. Next, I clean the wheels because I'm such a messy weatherer. I then check 
that the wagon rolls freely after all the things it's been through. I then place the wagon in a white box. This white box has got a monkey sticker on, so the rest of the team know it's been through all my processes. And that completes my wagon acceptance checks.